This is me in Red Dead Redemption 2. It's an action adventure game with over 60 hours of stunning gameplay. I'm about to brush this horse and you're gonna see the dust fly off. Games today are meticulously detailed. They're mysterious and heartwarming and colorful and stylized. And inside every one of these major games, Fortnite, PUBG, Rocket League, you'll find these. Put thousands, sometimes millions, of these tiny triangles together and you can make a person or a car or an entire world, but you never see them. So, why triangles? Take another look at this game. Technically, what you're seeing is all squares. Your screen is divided into pixels, and each pixel can display exactly one color. That's been true since the earliest video games, like Pong. It was just squares, right? So it was just like a pile of squares to make two paddles, and one square that was the ball. And the fact that I could move something and it moved was like super beautiful. That's Brett Bibby. He grew up playing Pong, and now he leads the engineering team at Unity, one of the top game engines in the world. A game engine basically gives you the tools that you need to build elaborate environments. Let's imagine you wanted to make a Wild West game. You wanted to ride into town and have a shootout. So you might start off with just like creating some boxes to represent the saloon, the bank, and other things, the main road. And it would just be all white. You would just try to get a sense of size and scale, kind of like Legos, right? Just try to get a sense of the space. And so I'm iterating and developing it slowly. And when you're done, the detailed game that you made needs to show up as pixels on a player's screen. That process is rendering. And the player's computer is gonna have to do a ton of math to follow through. In the last 20 years, the amount we can show on screen per second has gone up. Way, way up. This is a standard measure of computing power. It tells you the number of calculations a machine can perform per second, in billions. You'd think that a more powerful computer would make it easier to render games, and it does. Except that game makers keep competing to add more and more detail, pushing the limits of what even the newest technology can do. So the game engine's job is partly to keep the number of computations needed for each detail as low as possible, so that game makers can fit more in. Which brings us back to these guys. Triangles are used almost exclusively in rendering for video games. They're a way for a game engine to batch pixels, allowing the player's computer to process more detail. From the computer's point of view, everything in your game really looks like this. The game engine creates sets of instructions that the computer translates into pixels on your screen. This V means that these are coordinates for vertices, the corners of some kind of shape. Imagine playing connect the dots. You'd use straight lines, right? Especially if you didn't know what shape you were making yet. The player's computer is playing three-dimensional connect the dots, sometimes thousands of times every second. For them, the equivalent of straight lines is flat surfaces. Flat surfaces are the easiest to render because they don't require a computer to do any additional math to figure out curves or dents. So the game engine needs to convert curved surfaces into flat ones for the player's computer to process. And it turns out, the best way to do that is through triangles. Try picking out three dots in the air in front of you. No matter where you put them, they're always going to be on the same plane. The surface of the triangle is always flat. And no other shape with vertices is like that. If you have four points, then those four points could actually describe a very complex object. Four points can describe a pyramid, for example. That results in a more mathematically complex, higher processing power ask just to figure out the pixels on the surface. So, triangles it is. Triangles and the ongoing improvements in game technology make it easier for creators to develop the beautiful games that exist today. So in the old days, it was like, well, this is what I can do. I can have a fixed screen with eight things moving on it. I think nowadays, pretty much whatever you want to create, you could, you could find a way to create. If you'd like to learn more about how to make video games, you should click the link and head on over to Skillshare, their massive library of over 20,000 classes on design, business, and technology, also includes a bunch on how to make video games, including my favorite, which is all about how to make that classic snake game. They have a premium membership too, which can offer you unlimited classes on how to improve your game making skills or whatever else you're excited about. And because you're a Vox fan, they'll give you two months of Skillshare for free. 
To sign up, just click the link in the description and the first 500 of you will get two months of unlimited classes, no charge. Skillshare doesn't directly impact our editorial at all, but their support helps make videos like this one possible. So go check them out. Thank you.